all stations on Dragon. One minute until configure for terminal count. T minus 30 seconds. Minus 15 seconds. Falcon 9, go for propellant loading. Dragon is in countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. Ignition. It's just after midnight on March 3rd, and you are looking at a live view of the Dragon spacecraft as it approaches the International Space Station for a planned docking in just under two and a half hours from now. Uh, that light you can see on your screen is indeed the Dragon 2 spacecraft from a view on the International Space Station. Welcome back to the live mission coverage of SpaceX's first crew demonstration mission to the International Space Station for NASA. My name is Tom Perdario, and I'm a software engineer here at SpaceX, and I'm very excited to bring you live coverage of what will be the first docking of SpaceX's Crew Dragon vehicle to the space station. And joining me here is NASA Public Affairs Officer Dan Hewitt. Dan, so great to be on with you again. It's great to still be here. Great to be here in the middle of the night for more space station action. Uh, thanks for having me. It's great. Uh, we're going to watch Dragon dock to the space station. This time it's a brand new Dragon and it's built for astronauts and it's an exciting milestone in NASA's commercial crew program. We're also going to be joined throughout the broadcast today by my counterpart Gary Jordan. He's over at the Johnson Space Center in Houston at the International Space Station Flight Control Room. In case you missed it, which I don't know how you could have, the mission began just about 24 hours ago when Falcon 9 lifted off from historic launch pad 39A in Cape Canaveral at 2.49 a.m. local time, lighting up the sky, Falcon 9 carrying Crew Dragon into space. It was a super exciting moment. Thousands of people gathered around the Space Coast to watch. We actually had a pretty good crowd here for the broadcast yesterday, too. I could barely hear myself think. I, I can't even, it's hard to even describe the excitement here at SpaceX headquarters. Uh, Dan and I were both here uh, on yesterday's webcast and uh, it was just, the energy here was unbelievable. Everyone's so excited to launch this spacecraft. Uh, once that Dragon reached orbit and opened its nose cone, the Guidance, Navigation and Control, or GNC sensors were exposed. These are a series of highly sophisticated and accurate light and thermal detection sensors that, along with GPS and the inertial measurement units, help navigate Dragon safely to the space station. Over the last 24 hours, Dragon has been periodically firing its onboard thrusters to stay on course to the ISS and completing a series of vehicle checkouts along the way. And today's mission really represents the culmination of a partnership between NASA and SpaceX that started with flying cargo to the station and has evolved to safely and reliably fly astronauts very soon. As part of this partnership, SpaceX has already made 16 cargo runs to the space station. This is the first visit of a crew version of Dragon, though, and it's the first time a Dragon will dock directly to the space station, as opposed to being pulled in by the space station's robotic arm. That's right, and what's really special about this new Dragon vehicle is that it's actually a fully autonomous spacecraft, which means it essentially guides itself to the space station, as it's doing right now. Uh, it's worth noting that Crew Dragon also features manual override capability in case the crew is in need. Yeah, and right now, uh, Dragon and the space station flying just over the northern coast of Africa. They're closing in on each other, Dragon catching up uh, as it's raised its orbit a couple of hundred kilometers just in the last day. From this perspective and all of your views today, it's going to look like Dragon's coasting along very slowly, but both it and station are traveling at an enormous velocity. They're going about 17,500 miles an hour relative to the Earth's surface and it's just going to be a waiting clearance to proceed to its next arrival checkpoints. And to put into perspective just how fast everything's moving, a commercial airplane usually cruises at about 550 miles per hour, it takes about five hours to go from L.A. to New York City. If you were able to fly as fast as Dragon, you could cover that distance in just eight and a half minutes. And you can actually see what Dragon has been uh, doing over the past uh, 24 hours right now on your screen. Uh, immediately after that Dragon spacecraft separated from the Falcon 9 rocket, it began what we uh, call the activation and rendezvous phase of the mission. During this phase, mission operators configured the vehicle for on-orbit operations, and Dragon executed a series of burns which gradually raised its orbit to align more closely with the ISS. A final coalyptic burn, which started at about 9.59 uh, p.m. here at local time in Hawthorne, placed Dragon into the same orbital plane of the ISS, uh, about two and a half kilometers below and seven kilometers behind, uh, which had then prepared it for its approach and autonomous docking maneuvers. 
That's right, and about 10 minutes ago, while on this orbit, Dragon transitioned to what we call integrated operations, and that's really just something for the ground. So during integrated operations, the SpaceX flight controllers closely coordinate every move of Dragon with the NASA flight team in Houston. Ground controllers initiate and monitor all the preparations for approach, including establishing communications between Dragon and the station, and also initializing all of the spacecraft's navigation sensors to prepare for that autonomous docking. And over the next couple of hours, Dragon's going to execute a series of demos, this is Demo 1, before it actually docks with the space station. That's right, and since this is a new vehicle, these tests are meant to demonstrate that Crew Dragon is capable of maneuvering away from the space station in case of an emergency. The crew on board the space station will be very involved in Dragon's test maneuvers and will be monitoring its approach the whole way in. And today on board the space station, there's NASA astronaut Anne McLean, Russian cosmonaut Oleg Kononenko, and Canadian astronaut David St. Jacques. First, they actually demonstrated the ability to remotely command Dragon while outside something known as the approach ellipsoid, which we'll get into that a little bit later, uh, just to make sure the crew can actually act as a backup to control the spacecraft. They just turned on a light and left it blinking. And once Dragon is inside that keep-out sphere, which is an imaginary circle with about a 200-meter radius, sort of like a city block in all directions around the station, uh, the crew will send the spacecraft a retreat command, sending it away in a test of its abort capability. Then, after that retreat command is successfully tested, it's time for the final approach, with Dragon slowly approaching the docking port on the front part of the station's Harmony module. It'll then be linking up with the International Docking Adapter and will be the first time that this new docking adapter has been used. This is a very different process from what we've seen for the uh, cargo Dragon deliveries in the past, which used a process called berthing. Both methods have advantages and disadvantages. Yeah, that's right. Docking can be done autonomously with no crew aboard the station. It's typically a much faster process, both when arriving and leaving, but it still requires that pinpoint accuracy to approach uh, safely. Uh, berthing requires a vehicle to approach the station and then stop, kind of hover outside so it can be captured by a crew member using the space station's robotic arm. This is an example from a previous SpaceX cargo mission. Once it's captured, it gets maneuvered around and then attached to a common berthing mechanism, which is actually the same type of port used to connect each module on the station together. It's a much slower process, but those hatches are significantly larger than docking ports, which is perfect when you're bringing up big cargo items. The primary purpose of this mission is to demonstrate Dragon's systems and capabilities before the next flight when we'll have people on board for the first time. Yeah, and it's going to be NASA astronauts Bob Behnken and Doug Hurley. And they were selected to be the first humans to fly a Dragon into space. And they're going to be on board this next mission known as Demo 2 later this year. Bob Behnken was selected as an astronaut back in the year 2000 and flew to the space station twice on Space Shuttle Endeavour. He also served as NASA's chief astronaut for three years before joining the initial cadre of astronauts assigned to the commercial crew program. And flying alongside him is going to be NASA's, uh, NASA's Doug Hurley. He was Behnken's astronaut classmate, also getting selected back in 2000. And he had a similar resume. He flew on two shuttle missions to the station as well. His second, though, was on STS-135, and that was the final flight in the space shuttle program back in 2011, and the last time we launched humans at the space station from America. And we're so happy to get right back into that. Uh, over the course of this mission, Dragon will be put through the paces to demonstrate important functions like navigating around the space station, uh, receiving commands from crews on board, of course, docking and undocking, and conducting activities while attached to the station, including a robotic survey of the Dragon spacecraft. All of this work will push us closer to that very first flight with astronauts aboard. While there are no humans on board today's flight, uh, Dragon is actually carrying a special passenger named Ripley. Let's uh, get acquainted with Ripley and her role in today's mission. As a part of our Demonstration 1 mission, we have a special passenger on board. The technical term for a special passenger is an anthropomorphic test device, or in short, an ATD. But we're just going to call her Ripley. My name is Ali Reza Farjud, and I'm a senior dynamics engineer here at SpaceX. Ripley's job is to feel everything that an astronaut will feel when they fly on Dragon. She is essentially full of sensors across her body, including the head, neck, and spine. For this mission, Ripley is going to use 10 out of her 30 sensors to give us all the information we need about the most sensitive parts of her body. She is going to give us information about her body loads and the seat loads, and we're going to use all that information to analyze and make sure our predictions are correct to design tests and understand exact behavior of the seat system in Crew Dragon. From liftoff to splashdown, essentially she is going to tell us how she feels during the whole mission. We also have a microphone around her ears, 
so we're going to hear whatever she hears. The goal of this mission is to make sure that the crew are going to be safe, comfortable, and enjoy the ride on the Dragon. During a nominal ascent, the crew will feel like they're riding on an exciting roller coaster ride. On the way back, during a nominal splashdown, the crew will feel like they are diving into a swimming pool. Interestingly, this is not the first time we're using this technology to make sure that the crew are going to be safe. The first time was in 2015 on the paddleboard test. In addition to these tests, we're doing a lot more testing to make sure all the worst case scenarios are understood, the crew are going to be safe, and all our injury metrics are within limits. We're going to be using this technology again in the future. In fact, Ripley is going to be flying in our in-flight abort test later this year. We're not going to be getting real-time data for this mission. Once Ripley comes back home, she is going to give us all the data, and that's going to get us one step closer to human spaceflight for everyone. Yeah, Ripley had a heck of a ride uphill yesterday, and she's doing pretty great now. We actually have some views uh, inside of Dragon still, and we're going to get those hopefully throughout the webcast today, and we're going to be able to see that hatch open in just a couple of hours from now. And you can kind of make it out. Our zero-G indicator looks to have hopped out of its seat uh, and is floating just, just to the uh, in between two of those seats. But Ripley on the far end, still strapped in and still ready to go. Uh, NASA's commercial crew program, though, represents a new era in space travel. And since the end of the shuttle program, the only ride of the station has been on the Russian Soyuz. But by working with SpaceX and Boeing, there's soon going to be a new fleet of spacecraft capable of bringing humans to low Earth orbit. And of course, all of this supports the mission of the International Space Station, humanity's premier laboratory in space, where we're pushing the boundaries in science and technology every single day. The space station, its history is really interesting. It's been up in orbit for almost two decades now. Uh, let's take a close look at how the International Space Station came to be and its role in furthering human space exploration. The International Space Station, a football field-sized, million-pound laboratory flying around planet Earth at 17,500 miles per hour. It's our home in low Earth orbit and the bridge to exploring the far reaches of our solar system. A place to learn what it takes to live, to work, to thrive in space. Thanks to space agencies representing more than a dozen countries around the world, it went from the drawing board to liftoff when the first piece flew into space in 1998. That kicked off over a decade of construction, hauling the station to orbit piece by piece on NASA's space shuttle and Russian rockets. And after the first crew arrived in November 2000, we started an unbroken streak of humans living and working in space. Building on the legacy of past outposts like Skylab and Mir, the International Space Station became the training ground for humanity's next great journeys. Learning how to live in space for extreme periods of time, building and perfecting the technologies necessary to travel to our neighbors in the solar system. It gave us a place right on our doorstep to prepare for the next giant leap into the unknown. And thanks to the station, a new era in outer space is unfolding. What was once the domain of only nations and governments is now populated by a growing space fleet from American industry. Private spacecraft to fly cargo and crew members, new habitats and technologies for future space missions, and an open door for companies, research institutions, and even students around the world to do research in space that have never had the opportunity before. All laying the foundation for a robust economy in space. There have been thousands of experiments, hundreds of spacewalks, endless hours of challenges and successes, all done by humans hailing from countries around the globe. The International Space Station is what we can achieve as a planet when we come together to do the things that are hard. And the work isn't slowing down. Because we're ready for the next giant leap. Because we're ready to go farther. Because what we do and learn along the way is for the benefit of all of humankind. Now let's talk a little more about Crew Dragon, which was developed to transport both crew and cargo to and from the International Space Station. A lot of what was learned from Cargo Dragon was ultimately leveraged in the design of this vehicle. Uh, crew Dragon is fully autonomous, which means it can basically fly itself, but does feature full manual override capability in case of any emergency. 
All of these enhancements help towards SpaceX's goal of reusability and less refurbishment between missions. So let's take a closer look at some of the advancements on Crew Dragon. Crew Dragon stands at almost 27 feet tall from the very bottom of the trunk to the very top of the nose cone. Crew Dragon is composed of two main elements. There's the capsule, which is designed to hold crew and that pressurized cargo. And there's also an unpressurized section known as the trunk. The nose cone on top of the capsule protects the docking system, which Tom is madly in love with, and also the guidance navigation and control system, and it's going to stay attached to the Crew Dragon spacecraft, unlike Cargo Dragon, which will help towards SpaceX's reusability efforts. The docking system is probably one of the coolest parts about this. We're going to do a deep dive in a little <laughs> bit. Uh, opposite that nose cone is the trunk, and this provides the mating interfaces for Falcon 9, the Dragon capsule, and cargo. On the outside, one half of the trunk contains a radiator that rejects heat from the active thermal control system to space. Uh, this uses our new PICA tiling technology. And the other half contains solar cells used to charge the vehicle's batteries. And then the spacecraft is designed to accommodate up to seven crew members with modular seats that can be removed and replaced by additional cargo. Uh, the seats themselves are made of carbon fiber and will be custom sized for any of the crew members flying on board. There's then a control panel that's centered between the pilot and commander seats, and that consists of three touchscreen displays, which allows the crew to jump in and operate the vehicle and fly it manually. And lastly, our Super Draco launch escape system is the key safety feature of Crew Dragon, giving the crew the ability to safely escape from launch all the way to orbit, which no spacecraft in history has ever possessed until now. Uh, the video you're seeing is the launch escape system in action. This is the pad abort test completed just a few years ago. In a couple of months, we'll also hold another test to simulate an in-flight abort scenario. And again, just to remind you, the initial contact between Dragon and the space station is expected to happen at about 3 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, we're still listening in. In a couple of minutes, we're expecting the mission operators to conduct a go-no-go no -go poll that will allow Dragon to begin what's known as the approach initiation burn. And that's going to bring Dragon inside of that approach ellipsoid. So we're going to stand by, continue to get these great views from space station, and we're going to listen for that call. So session name is uh, Alpha Victor November 443, and then in brackets 450. And session information is Alpha Victor November 4 X-ray X-ray HD H.264 stream. Multicast group reads 172 decimal 22 decimal 208 decimal 56. Copy and checking. Port is one, two, three, four, five. And so we did get the confirmation that that go no go poll has occurred. And so pretty soon they're going to be moving to the approach initiation burn. And this is going to be a burn that's actually going to bring the spacecraft inside of the approach ellipsoid. Now the approach ellipsoid, and I'm going to try to paint you a word picture. Uh, it's actually it's an imaginary shape around the International Space Station. It's about four kilometers long, two kilometers high and two kilometers thick. And what it acts as is kind of a gate for any spacecraft traveling to and from the station. So before you're actually in that approach ellipsoid, any maneuvers your spacecraft does, you have to make sure that it will stay outside of that approach ellipsoid for up to 24 hours. Now, ultimately, we need to get closer. We need to break that rule when we want to dock. So they just do this final go, no go poll to make sure that we're ready to go. Everything looks good on Dragon and that burn is going to be coming up shortly. 
So, I mean, just talking through that, as you can imagine, there's a lot of coordination and communication that goes into every single launch. For the current mission, SpaceX and NASA have had teams working and talking together on headsets across the country since liftoff, and they're going to continue to do so for the duration of Dragon's six-day trip. On the SpaceX side, ahead of launch, our teams at the Cape are performing final day launch checkouts to make sure the Dragon was healthy and good to go. At the moment of liftoff, we transferred authority over Falcon 9 and Dragon from our firing room there in Florida to mission control here in Hawthorne, which you can see on your screen right now. All those people in, uh, in Hawthorne staying up late all through the night making sure that Dragon is healthy. Uh, while there are a number of people on headset in mission control, the mission director is the one in charge. Since Dragon is a highly autonomous vehicle, our operations is continually monitoring the health and performance of the spacecraft uh, through the entire duration of its journey until Dragon splashes safely down back on the Earth. Our team in Mission Control also coordinates closely with the Mission Control Center in, uh, in Houston at Johnson Space Center, especially when we're in what we call integrated operations, which Dan was talking about earlier. As we mentioned earlier, the uh, integrated ops uh, mission operators initiate and monitor preparations for approach to the space station as well as preparations for autonomous docking with the station. So let's actually check in with Gary at Johnson Space Center to learn more about what the teams over there are monitoring. Thanks, Tom. We are actually in integrated operations right now. We have a good AI burn, and uh, Dragon is headed towards uh, the International Space Station. Here in Mission Control, we have a, a specialist team in Orbit 1, specifically uh, trained for this particular docking mission of DM-1. Three orbits uh, here in Mission Control Houston, of course, as you said, 24-7 operations to monitor the systems on board the International Space Station. This is Orbit 1, the first shift of the day, uh, mainly to over see these docking operations. Every person you see in this room is uh, is here for a specific person uh, purpose, looking at something very specific um, that's on part of the International Space Station. Everything from tracking where the station is going to be uh, to actual pointing and positioning, someone monitoring the um, life support systems, uh, someone actually looking after some of the specialist operations. We have some spacewalks coming up, uh, as well as the cameras, where, uh, and even the room itself, we have someone dedicated just to make sure that we have good communication with the station at all times. The uh, flight director today is Scott Stover uh, for the specialist DM-1 uh, mission teams. Uh, next to him, you see Leslie Ringo. She is the Capcom and has been communicating with the crew uh, right now who are awake and going through those uh, procedures to begin the monitoring of uh, Dragon uh, approaching the International Space Station. Actually, not too long ago, we heard David say Jock come down on the space to ground saying something very bright is approaching the International Space Station. Very exciting time. Uh, they're working through the monitoring of Dragon um, uh, out of the cupola window. This is a bay window facing towards the Earth at the bottom uh, of the International Space Station. Of course, a lot of the specialists in this room uh, here specifically for DM-1, and a lot of the work out of this room has been done uh, specifically for this mission, especially recently, a lot of preparation. They even conducted a robotic survey of the docking port of the front of the station where Dragon, where Dragon is set to dock, essentially scanning for any imperfections. This is uh, the International Dock docking adapter that you guys were talking about uh, the first time it'll be used by any spacecraft, uh, just making sure that there is no any debris, that uh, everything looks good, and that this is a safe port that Dragon is going to be docking to. Again, everything's looking good on the station's side. We'll go back to you, Dan and Tom, and see how Dragon is doing uh, now that we're in integrated operations. All right. Thank you, Gary. And as you guys heard, uh, Gary confirmed that approach initiation burn has started, which means Dragon's now closing in. So it's going to move inside of that approach ellipsoid. Everything looked good for the teams, and it's now on its way. This burn takes about 45 minutes. Well, the burn is ended, but the flight to the next waypoint takes about 45 minutes. Tom, where are we heading next? So waypoint zero is what we're going to be, is what's called. Uh, waypoint zero is actually within that uh, approach ellipsoid that Dan was describing earlier. Uh, like we've said before, Dragon takes a very phased approach getting towards the space station. Uh, it's sort of like uh, speed limits uh, in a very sensitive yeah. area. We want to make sure that Dragon is um, ready to go for each uh, gate as we get closer and closer and closer. And waypoint zero is that first uh, is place. It's about 400 meters uh, south of the space, or directly below the space station. Yeah. 
and so there's a lot that's going to be happening and it's going to be a phased approach so they're going to get to this next waypoint zero they're going to camp out we're going to do another go no go and then it's on up to the really exciting stuff when dragon's going to get right in front of the space station and it's going to be on what's called the v-bar so uh, for anyone who has followed stuff in the past, the shuttle would approach on what's known as the R-bar, which is the radial vector that was right underneath the station. Uh, Dragon's actually going to swing up to the front of station because it's going to be docking there to the international docking adapter. And it's going to be approaching on the V-bar. And it's going to get there and it's going to stop at about, we have some handy numbers down here, at about 150 meters away, that'll be waypoint one. And then it's going to camp out there, and then we're going to get into some of the demonstrations. And there, a bunch have already been completed, and there's still some to come for Dragon. Uh, some of those, uh, well, you said earlier that we were going to be having a uh, commanded retreat once we're on that, uh, that V-bar. That is when the Dragon spacecraft is going to be approaching. And about when it gets to about 150 meters around waypoint one, it's going to be commanded by the crew in the space station to uh, retreat from the space station back towards about 180 meters. Uh, this is just a test to make sure that the Dragon is fully capable of backing away in the case of any off nominal, nominal telemetry. Uh, Dan and I know all about retreat calls from our last CRS mission with the Cargo Dragon. Uh, and the, the, in the nominal case, it doesn't necessarily mean that anything is wrong with the mission. It just if anything looks even a little bit off, we want to make sure that the Dragon can approach or go all the way back to its hold position and await uh, further instructions there. Yeah, and they actually already did a demonstration of the thrusters that would be used for that retreat command shortly after they got on orbit, just a couple of hours after uh, they did a burn of two of the Draco thrusters on the front of the spacecraft, which will be used for that actual retreat. They checked out fine. They've done demonstrations of uh, Dragon's GPS system. Uh, actually, right after getting on orbit, they did something known as the absolute GPS demo, and that actually compares the GPS data that Dragon's receiving to the ground models just to make sure everything's matching up. And uh, we just completed another one a little while ago um, called the relative GPS demo, and that was Dragon sharing its positioning data with the space station, which it's now in, con or in communications with and it's gonna get a lot closer soon. Hopefully we'll start getting some really good views uh, of Dragon from those cameras as it's gonna get a lot closer now. Again, approaching from about seven kilometers behind and two and a half kilometers below, and pretty soon it's only gonna be 400 meters below. Regardless though, I mean, planet Earth is <laughs> looking pretty splendid so yeah, far. Yeah, you can see a, a really great shot from the uh, ISS right now. I don't believe because it's the daytime, you can see the, uh, the tiny spot that we saw yeah. of Dragon earlier, but as soon as we go into the shadow of the Earth, uh, the Dragon will be visible, yeah. and uh, we should be able to see it as it gets closer and closer. If any of you have uh, tuned into our CRS uh, approach grapple webcasts, uh, you can see the dragon slowly, slowly come into view, and that's the really exciting part of the mission.
This is Mission Control Houston. You are getting a live view of the Dragon spacecraft uh, now just about 3,000 meters away uh, from the International Space Station. At this time, the International Space Station about to enter into an orbital nighttime, 266 statute miles above the Earth, uh, just south of Australia. Again, about to enter an orbital nighttime. You'll see the views get a little bit darker. Uh, at this point, Dragon has completed uh, its approach initiation burn. We are now in integrated operations. A few more milestones to hit. Uh, in just under eight minutes at this point, uh, we're looking for a mid-course burn, an approach initiation mid-course burn uh, to look forward to. Not too long after that, we'll en enter into uh, the 1,000 meter or kilometer range from the International Space Station.
And you're continuing to get some great shots of Dragon as it gets closer and closer to the International Space Station. You can see that flashing light, which again, the crew actually commanded that on during a demo a little bit earlier in today's flight. And we're just inside of 15 minutes from actually another go, no go, when we're gonna be able to go inside of the keep out sphere, which we'll break down all of that in just a little bit. But first, we are joined by somebody who has kind of a vested interest in this flight today, uh, NASA astronaut Doug Hurley. He's one of the two astronauts assigned to the Demo-2 mission, one of the first people who's gonna fly Dragon into space. Doug, first off, thanks for, thanks for being here. It had to be a heck of a trip because you were out at launch, right? How was that? Uh, the launch was incredible, Dan. I, I, can't, I can't even begin to describe it. You know, being there with the, both the SpaceX and the NASA teams uh, and just to see the years of work kind of come to fruition as we watched the Falcon launch into the sky. It was awesome. Yeah, thanks so much for being here. It's a huge Bet. honor. Um, I just uh, want to know, uh, how, are you are you uh, ready to pilot this uh, this capsule into the International Space Station? I mean, it must be, uh, I, I'm excited just to watch it happen. I can't even imagine the feeling of being, you know, in the commander seat, so. It, it is exciting. Uh, Bob and I are, are ready to go when Dragon is ready. And whenever that happens, we're going to be ready to take that ride to the International Space Station. Do you know where you're going to be when it starts, when it comes home? Are you going to be with the landing teams? You're going to be out here? Because, I mean, after we get through all of our fun docking and undocking stuff and it's splashing down, where are you going to be for that? We will be here in Hawthorne again. Um, we think that's probably the best place to kind of follow the teams through the decisions yeah. for the deorbit burn and then the entry, descent, and landing. Um, it would be neat to be out with the teams uh, that are there to go retrieve Dragon once it splashes down, but I think this is probably the best place for us as, a, as the crew. Have you had a chance to be out on the boat yet for the recovery stuff? Not on the boat while it's been underway. We've been on the boat uh, at the dock and we've done some training out in the uh, ship basin there at KSC uh, for water recovery. All right. Cool. Yeah. Anything else, Tom? <laughs> uh, nothing. Just so <laughs> yeah. honored to be uh, to be in the presence. So. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> yeah, Doug, we won't want to keep you too long, so I know you and Bob are going to be following along. But again, everybody, Doug Hurley, this man is going to be flying a Dragon into space this year. So thank you so much for being here. We'll let you get back to it. You bet. Thanks, Dan. All right, thanks, Doug. Yeah, flashing light. Two other lights, red and green, so the Christmas motif in effect, just like our cargo missions to the uh, International Space Station on Dragon. It's going to continue approaching. The mid-course burn actually was just underway, and we already got the report that that was a good burn, and it's going to continue approaching to waypoint zero. Again, just as a reminder, waypoint zero is going to be 400 meters directly beneath the International Space Station, and that's going to be the next hold point in today's journey.
Houston and two for David and the Cupola SSC one seven. Hey David, um, just to make sure we're on the same page, can you confirm that you verify the cables for step three, decimal one, decimal four, and the monitor monitoring tool setup? Um, and then also, uh, we think we have fixed it, and so we just need you to bring up the RPOP display on the PCS to get that data transfer going. Copy, and yes, your cables in the physical setup was checked. Uh, and I see still some mouse action there, but as soon as uh, Pluto is, uh, is out of SSC-17, I'll pick up. Okay, we have gone a hands-off now on SSC-17, and so we just need for you to execute uh, in step 3.1.5, um, bringing up on the PCS, um, you'll be bringing up the RPOP display, and if you want me to read that out to you, I can do that as well. That is already up. That's been up for uh, since uh, the setup uh, yesterday. Do you want me to shut it down and bring it back up? Checking. Back with you. Um, if you can just verify that the RPOP is up, uh, we will just take care of it. That the RPOP PCS is up, and we'll take care of it from the ground. Yes, uh, the PCS uh, RPOP window is open. Okay, copy, and we will work it from the ground. Houston N2, Dragon Range is approximately 1,000 meters. Monitor long range approach per step two in 1.102 Dragon Approach and Retreat Monitoring.
And so right now, Dragon continuing to fly in a little bit closer. It's inside 1,000 meters already. It's continuing to fly in, and pretty soon it's gonna be only 400 meters away. And again, that's gonna be at waypoint zero, which is the next hold point that we're gonna be looking for for Dragon. Once it gets there, it's gonna get the final go, which we were hearing they are gonna be go to move inside of the keep out sphere. So that's gonna be like the next major milestone that we're gonna be looking towards. You can actually see the Dragon 2 spacecraft from the International Space Station on your screen right now. Uh, you're looking at uh, what looks like just a blinking white light and a red and green lights. Uh, those are all lights on the Dragon. Uh, right now, it looks like it's moving pretty slow or almost not moving at all, but yeah. just a quick reminder, both the station and the Dragon are currently uh, whipping around the Earth at 17,000 miles per hour. Uh, so there's actually a lot of energy involved in this right now and a lot of uh, precise maneuvers involved to get those two objects in orbit close to each other. Yeah, it's going to continue approaching. And just to just to recap for everybody, if you're joining, uh, so Dragon started out a couple of kilometers below and behind the space station. And right now it's moving in towards waypoint zero. There's gonna be a couple of waypoints along our way. Once we get to waypoint zero, it's gonna be about 400 meters directly below the International Space Station. Then it's gonna get a go to actually move inside of something known as the keep out sphere. So right now it's moving inside of the approach ellipsoid, which we described a little bit earlier. That's a, a oblong shape around the International Space, Space Station, an imaginary one. Uh, that actually governs what spacecraft are allowed to do when they're getting close. So anything outside that approach ellipsoid, you have to be within, or any maneuvers outside that approach ellipsoid, you can't get any closer to the space station within 24 hours. Now that it's moving inside that approach ellipsoid, it's past that gate. The next gate will be that keep out sphere, which is an area only 200 meters around the International Space Station. And any maneuvers just outside of there have to has to mean that the spacecraft is safe. We're basically not going to get any closer to the space station for at least four orbits. So we're basically just passing through these gates as we do this phased approach to the International Space Station. And so right here, you can actually see kind of, and these are not to scale, obviously, uh, or the space station would be truly massive. <laughs> Uh, but it did its final co-elliptic burn and then did the approach initiation burn, which we're moving through now and approaching waypoint zero. It'll be inside that larger shape. You can see the approach ellipsoid. And then after that, it'll actually move inside of the keep out sphere. That's right. Uh, waypoint zero is the waypoint that'll be within that approach ellipsoid. And the other two waypoints, uh, waypoint one and waypoint two, are actually inside the keep out sphere. Uh, waypoint one is only about 150 meters away from the docking port <coughs> on the forward part of the International Space Station, uh, directly along the docking axis. And then waypoint two is way closer, only about 20 meters away. Uh, by the time Dragon gets to the waypoint two, uh, we'll be ready to dock, uh, moving in very close towards the International Docking Adapter on the forward part of that space station. Yeah, that's right. And the space station itself is going to go through and do some setup on its side. They're actually going to hand over the attitude control of the International Space Station to thrusters on the Russian segment. And the, the solar arrays in the space station will get a special positioning just to protect it from any exhaust plumes from the thrusters on Dragon as it approaches. And we're also going to be doing some actual maneuvers. Uh, on your screen right now, you can see uh, this is a view from a camera inside the International Space Station uh, looking at the Dragon. There are some kind of objects in the screen outside of it. Those are actually reflections from inside uh, the space station, kind of like if you, uh, you know, are inside of a dark car, uh, or sorry, a, a well-lit car looking outside of a window. Uh, you might see some reflections back in of the bright interior. Um, but in the center of your screen, that again, like I said earlier, that blinking uh, light and the red and green, uh, that is the Dragon getting ever closer to the ISS as it approaches waypoint zero. That's right, and the, uh, the crew members on board the space station are mon monitoring and they're actually sending commands uh, throughout the operations today. And it's, uh, again, it's Canadian astronaut David St. Shock and uh, NASA astronaut Emma Klein. They're stationed in the cupola module. That's kind of the 360 degree bay window that we have on the bottom of the International Space Station that provides them a great view of the Earth below, but also visiting vehicles. That's where they're typically camped out for any berthing operations when they have to actually reach out and grapple the spacecraft using that robotic arm. But none of that's happening today because Dragon's going to be docking. Uh, yeah, that Cargo Dragon uh, is used to using those berthing uh, operations. That And Dan and I have actually personally been here for the last time we did that. That was a lot of fun. Uh, it was. But uh, luckily, we have the ability to dock with the space station uh, being the SpaceX and NASA docking systems. And uh, we'll get into that a little bit later when we get to the later waypoints. Uh, but right now, Dragon is still approaching waypoint zero. Uh, just a reminder, that is about 400 meters directly below 
the International Space Station. Uh, the station has a few terms used to describe the relative position of points away from it uh, in orbit. Uh, we use these terms called the, uh, one is called the R-bar. That's, uh, if you imagine a radius uh, drawn directly from the space station to the center of the Earth, anything that's along that radius is called the, uh, R, is, would be called on the R-bar. Uh, and then anything on a line that would uh, represent the velocity of the space station forward in its orbit, that's called the V-bar. Uh, right now, the Dragon is approaching waypoint zero on the R-bar, and it's going to be making a maneuver after that to swing around to the front uh, onto the V-bar, which is, will be our docking axis for later today. That's right. And once it's there, it'll fly up to waypoint one, and we'll be able to see a couple of demonstrations. Uh, again, Dragon's already done a bunch of demonstrations on its flight on the way to the International Space Station, including uh, firing the thrusters. Uh, and this graphic uh, is actually going to be showing uh, the approach corridor uh, for Dragon once it's in range to fly into the International Space Station. And this is something that's going to be really important for the crew members on board, as one of their jobs is to always be in the loop to command Dragon if they need to. So they're going to be using these corridors just to look if Dragon's attitude shifts anywhere inside or outside, and they have pretty strict limits on if they see Dragon doing anything that's not expected, they have the capability to send a command and send Dragon away. It can do a retreat, which we're going to have a demo of later, where it just kind of slowly backs away, and they can command it to hold, and they can also command it to abort, which is a much more dynamic maneuver and gets Dragon further away from the space station. But we're going to be seeing that retreat command after we get to waypoint one. It'll back itself up uh, a little over 30 meters from 150 meters to about 180. Uh, and then it will get a command to hold also from the crew. And then they'll look at how the data look, make sure that everything went well with the thrusters and on Dragon and that it's ready to do its final approach. And then the team's actually right behind us here in Hawthorne will give that final command to Dragon to fly in and dock to the International Space Station. Uh, the name of the game whenever any visiting vehicle approaches the space station is abundance of caution. Uh, it is very important to make sure that at every point along the way, uh, all systems are nominal, that the space station and the spacecraft are exactly where we want and think they should be. Uh, so these kind of retreat commands allow us to, just in case anything looks uh, off nominal for any reason, we can just command those vehicles to back off just a little bit. Uh, the nice thing about being in orbit with solar panels and, uh, and all the systems that spacecraft has is they can just hang out there if they need to. Uh, Dragon is currently, or right now we're in the shadow of the Earth, but every time it swings around into the sun, it is able to generate power and keep those batteries charged uh, and is able to stay operating for a long period of time. So uh, when we do command that retreat, uh, Dragon will push away from the space station to about 100 meter, 180 meters, as Dan said, and then just uh, hang out there until it's given another command to come in for a real docking. That's right. Uh, right now, we're hearing we're about two minutes away from, a pro from reaching waypoint zero, which again, Dragon will only be 400 meters away from the space station, which both vehicles right now in the dark of the Earth are flying over the Southern Pacific. They're about halfway between uh, Hawaii and South America, actually. Uh, but let's uh, stand by, and we're going to hear that we're at waypoint zero momentarily.
Question on two for SSC 17. Did you need us to repower that uh, SSC? And here with you and two. Yes, we'd appreciate that. We have a uh, blue air screen saying it requires restart. We will restart it now. Copy. We're, you're doing the restart. Station Houston N2, Dragon is transitioning to the docking axis and has been enabled to enter the keepout sphere. Monitor approach for step three in 1.102, Dragon approach and retreat monitoring. Understand you have issues uh, with RPOP, but we will take your range monitoring. Houston station copy for step three, current range 373, attitude is expected. Copy. All right, so we just got the call. So Dragon actually passed waypoint zero and they already got the go to move inside of that keep out sphere. So it's gonna now do a maneuver that's gonna swing it up around in front of the International Space Station. So right now it's about 400 meters beneath it and pretty soon it's gonna be just about 150 meters in front of it. So we're gonna see Dragon kind of swing up and around and we're gonna be seeing in this animation here uh, that it's going to start changing its attitude to actually get to waypoint one. It'll take a little over 20 minutes uh, to get there. Again, everything kind of slow and steady with today's operation, but already moving inside of the keep out sphere now. So again, just a reminder that keep out sphere, an area about 200 meters around the International Space Station, it's an imaginary circle. And before you enter that keep out sphere, your spacecraft has to be safe to not go into it for at least four orbits. We're now going to break that rule, basically, and go inside of the keep out sphere as we get closer to docking. This uh, diagram you're seeing on your screen right here is, uh, is you can see the International Space Station and the Dragon. Um, right now, this is a, uh, the blue line you can see is sort of a free return trajectory, or uh, if no further uh, propellant was used, no further activation of the thrusters on board Dragon, uh, where its path would take it. Uh, as Dan was saying, inside the keepout sphere, you need to make sure that your uh, maneuvers are going to not in any way conflict with the International Space Station. And you can see that uh, were Dragon to not uh, touch any of its thrusters, it would uh, just naturally fly away because of the orbital dynamics involved. Um, however, Dragon is uh, going to fire its thrusters to, to change that ever so slightly as it gets closer to waypoint one. Uh, and you can see waypoint one is actually the, uh, there are two gray dots just to the left of the International Space Station within those uh, gray lines. Um, you can see that blue line is uh, intersecting waypoint one and we're getting closer to it. And so this is our first view from the camera on Dragon. So this is a forward view. So right on the end of the nose, well, right where the nose cone used to be, no longer covering it, but right by the docking port uh, for the Dragon spacecraft. So that's actually a view back at the International Space Station. Those white ribbons that you're looking at are radiators on board the station. Those are used to uh, get rid of all the heat generated by the electronics and all the various systems on board is uh, you are in the vacuum of space, so you have to have a means to do it. You can't just have convection like we do down here on planet Earth. But uh, so Dragon now, or the station in the sights of Dragon, it's getting closer. We're moving to that waypoint. And again, just as a reminder, there's going to be some demonstrations coming up. Uh, Dragon is currently making its way towards waypoint one. Uh, once it gets to waypoint one, it'll begin going towards waypoint two. That is going from 150 meters away from the docking port towards 20. Uh, however, before it gets there, it will be commanded to retreat and push back to 180 meters away from the station. Uh, this is all going to be happening within the general vicinity of what we call the V-bar, like I was just uh, explaining before. That is a line kind of coming directly out of the docking adapter. 
and uh, head towards the direction that the International Space Station is orbiting. Yeah, and obviously, so these demos will happen on this mission, as this is the first demonstration mission. We won't be doing something like this in Demo 2 when Doug and Bob are on board the spacecraft, as they're going to be flying right in for that docking. Uh, but there's been a bunch of demonstrations that Dragon has conducted throughout its flight already in the last 24 hours, uh, doing the initial firings of those thrusters on the front end of the Dragon spacecraft, uh, just getting it ready to conduct that retreat uh, test that we're going to be seeing in a little while once it arrives, uh, a little after it arrives at Waypoint 1. Uh, they've been testing out the GPS systems, a number of different systems on board the International, or on board Dragon. Uh, for now, though, let's run over to Johnson Space Center in Houston real quick, see how things are going inside there in the room as they're monitoring systems on the station and getting ready to receive a Dragon. Copy, switching to one. Thanks, Dan. Uh, you might be able to hear some of the space to ground communication that are coming from this room. Again, Leslie Ringo, Capcom, filtering the information to the crew. Uh, right now, they are receiving telemetry uh, from the Dragon. Um, this is uh, where they're monitoring from, is uh, the Cupola workstation at the, at the uh, uh, I guess you can say the bottom or the Earth-facing side of the station. It provides a great view as the Dragon approaches from the bottom up uh, toward, uh, through the keep-out sphere to waypoint one coming up here uh, very soon. Uh, you guys mentioned it's, uh, it's a relatively slow rate that the Dragon is approaching. I can see the telemetry now. We're looking at a rate of, of just about 0.12 meters per second. That's how slow this thing is going. But slow and steady is the way to go when it comes to uh, a docking maneuver such as this. Uh, right now, uh, we're just under 300 meters away uh, from the station. Good reports from the crew. Uh, everything's looking good on the station side, and uh, we're receiving telemetry from Dragon. And again, we'll start. Uh, we'll work through those procedures until we get to the point where we're ready to send them the, some of those commands uh, that you guys are talking about. In the meantime, we'll. Uh, go back to you to get the latest on some of the uh, next milestones here coming up for Dragon on its approach to the International Space Station. All Thanks right. so much, Gary. Uh, yeah, it's great to see uh, all the excitement over there. Uh, we're obviously very excited over here yeah. uh, as Dragon gets closer to its waypoint one. Uh, again, Dragon's getting pretty close. We said 300 meters away. Uh, we are going all the way in to 150 meters away directly on the line of the International Docking Adapter. Yeah, so pretty soon this camera is going to be looking right down the barrel of that uh, V-bar and it's going to be looking right at the docking port and it's going to be docking to the international docking adapter. And so here's actually a heads up display on that camera and when we lock in signal we'll be able to use that but that's actually representative of some of the displays that they'll have on board the Dragon spacecraft to actually approach and dock uh, once there are crew members on board. Uh, but again, it's going to be docking to the International Docking Adapter. This is going to be the first time this docking adapter has ever been used. Uh, it was also delivered on a Dragon spacecraft, the cargo version, uh, a couple of years ago and has been attached to the very front of the station on something called a pressurized mating adapter, uh, which is attached to Node 2 or the Harmony module on the very front. So that's where docking is going to be honing in on and docking uh, in just a little while from now. We are well ahead of our timeline so far. Originally, we were tracking to have this initial contact and capture between Dragon at about 3 a.m. local time here in Hawthorne, but they've been about 15 minutes or so just kind of flying through the milestones. So we should be early today, but I don't want to jinx it. Always, always great to see when things are going so well that we're ahead of yeah. schedule. Uh, right now, you did see on your screen that heads-up display. That's actually what the Drag uh, Dragon yeah. astronauts will be using in the future. Uh, we are watching from the ground, obviously, so uh, depending on the signal condition of Dragon uh, to the ground, we sometimes get video from it. Right now, we do have video, uh, but depending on where our ground stations are and where Dragon is, we're not always getting the video. Um, of course, on the Dragon capsule, for the astronauts sitting on board, they will have that video and be able to uh, use that heads-up display to see exactly where they're heading, uh, make sure they're on, on course towards the International Docking Adapter. Yeah, and the crew themselves on board the station are going to be using another camera on Dragon for some of the final monitoring during that approach. Uh, there's a centerline camera, so kind of right in the center of the hatchway on the Dragon spacecraft uh, that is feeding that signal directly to a laptop on board the International Space Station. And that's what the crew monitoring are using uh, to actually watch as Dragon approaches. Uh, and they're going to use that from waypoint two, which is only, again, about 20 meters away from the space station. 
uh, to the final docking point. And uh, they're going to be monitoring that the whole way through, making sure, again, Dragon is lined up correctly uh, with the docking port itself. And they're going to continue that until they're only about two meters away from the station. And then we might hear this called out over the space to ground loops. Uh, you'll hear the command chop, uh, which is the crew hands off point. And that's where the crew won't send any more commands to Dragon. And if they see uh, anything out of spec, it's all up to uh, the Dragon spacecraft itself to then command that abort and then fly away from the station. But right now we are going to hear a go, no go on our side pretty soon for Dragon to get the uh, go-ahead to approach waypoint two, uh, which is that point only 20, 20 meters away from the station. But again, we'll have those demos in between. Uh, you did mention that centerline camera. It's actually uh, very close to my heart. It's one of the first projects I worked on here yeah. at SpaceX. Um, so I'm very excited to see that in action for a live docking. Uh, and Dragon right now is using its Draco thrusters to control its, uh, its approach to the International Space Station. Uh, there are 16 in total, uh, with four of them positioned around the top uh, where the nose cone is. Um, and those four will be used for the retreat command that we're expecting very soon. Uh, so, like I was saying earlier, this is a diagram of uh, where the Dragon is currently headed. Uh, if it was just to not fire any of its thrusters and just keep free floating uh, in space, letting orbital mechanics to kind of take it towards uh, closer towards the International Space Station, uh, that blue line is the is the free return trajectory. Uh, right now, it's you can see that blue line intersecting with what the kind of tiny gray dot there. That is waypoint one. The and gray dot to the left of waypoint one is uh, actually the retreat uh, hold position. So after we get to waypoint one and are commanded to retreat, Dragon will push back towards that uh, second, the leftmost gray dot. That is the, uh, the retreat hold spot. Yeah, and right now we're still just about 10 minutes or so uh, away from that waypoint number one, which again, it's 150 meters out in front of the International Space Station, right on line with that docking port. So again, just about 10 minutes away until Dragon arrives at that point. So uh, that's going to be another exciting milestone checked off. And the teams are, again, just monitoring all the data on Dragon. They're going to be doing go, no go polls uh, between the teams in Houston and the teams out here in Hawthorne, making sure everything's still looking good on board Dragon systems before they give the go to move in even closer to the space station. Again, we were expecting that initial contact and capture, so that docking essentially uh, to come at about 3 a.m. Pacific time. We are a little bit ahead of schedule. Uh, as we've just kind of been burning through all these milestones, everything looking great so far on the vehicle. Uh, still not tracking any issues and everything going smoothly. So again, about 10 minutes away from waypoint number one. Uh, just a reminder, waypoint number one is at 150 meters away from the international docking adapter. That's less than um, an average city block. Uh, Dragon is getting very close uh, at the International Space Station. You can see uh, some intermittent views here from Dragon's transmission to the ground. Uh, looks like the space station has come around into the light. Uh, looks pretty beautiful. Uh, we will get even more uh, detailed pictures of that as the Dragon gets closer and closer to the forward port that it's about to dock with. Uh, right here you can see the, uh, over, the overlay that the crew would be seeing if they were inside Dragon right now. Um, there is a little green dot in the very center. Uh, that's currently tracking the docking port. And uh, if Dragon tilts away from it, it should stay tracked uh, 
but right now, since we're getting this in the ground, uh, it's this, this would normally be overlaid over the center line camera. Right now, we're getting this uh, feed from a different camera that's a little bit off center, so it's not going to be uh, exactly on all the time, but it will uh, simulate what a Dragon uh, astronaut would be seeing if they were in the commander's seat on those touchscreen displays. And as you can see, uh, Dragon and the ISS have both come into the uh, sunlight, and it looks like a beautiful view of that space station, uh, glowing brightly against the backdrop of space. Yeah, both uh, Dragon and the station right now about 412 kilometers or about 250 statute miles over the Earth's surface. They're just flying over uh, the very eastern part of Canada, and they're about to cross over the North Atlantic Ocean, so they're in that orbital sunrise now. And they're going to continue flying across the northern Atlantic, eventually swinging out over Spain and Africa. And they're going to continue on a southeasterly trajectory flying over the Earth. But uh, for now, we're just waiting for the go, no go now for moving past Waypoint 1, which will be that commanded retreat. Again, the crew kind of getting hands on with all the operations today. They're going to be commanding uh, the vehicle to retreat. And just hearing we are going to be go for that retreat demo. So again, we're going to get to waypoint one, just 150 meters in front of the space station. And then it's going to it's going to start moving in. And then the crew is going to command a retreat. So they're actually going to send a command using computers on the station to the Dragon spacecraft. And it'll be at about 140 meters. So they'll be a little past waypoint one. And then Dragon will stop and back away. It'll go back past waypoint one uh, out to about 180 meters away from the space station. The crew will then send another command for the vehicle to hold. It'll stop there, teams will look at the data, and then once everything looks good, the ground will send another command for Dragon to resume, and the next waypoint will be waypoint number two, only 20 meters away. So right now we're just waiting for uh, the crew on board the space station to send the retreat command to the Dragon uh, once it hits waypoint one. Uh, just want to talk a little bit about right now how Dragon receives those commands. I actually was lucky enough to work on the uh, communication side of Dragon uh, during my first few years at SpaceX. Uh, Dragon is capable of receiving commands uh, directly from the space station. It's also capable of receiving commands directly from the ground and through NASA's TDRS satellites, the tracking data relay satellites that are currently in uh, orbit above the Earth. Um, right now, uh, for this ret retreat command, they're going to be using the C2V2 system. That's the common communications for visiting vehicles. Uh, that provides a link for communications and data directly from the visiting vehicle, which in this case is the Dragon 2, to the International Space Station. And uh, once we get the, uh, once we're safely at waypoint one and get that call for a uh, a go for the retreat commands, uh, they will be using the computers inside the ISS over that link um, to send a command to Dragon. Um, they did test that link with um, turning on that light, like we said earlier. Uh, so we know it's working pretty well right now, and uh, hopefully the retreat command will we'll hear that call out soon. Yeah, and just before we lost signal, you were getting some great views from a high-definition camera on board the International Space Station. Those will be back up shortly, and those cameras are actually right on the very end 
uh, of the do of the docking port where Dragon's ultimately going to be flying to. So right next to that international docking adapter on the front end of the station connected to the Harmony module. And so they're going to provide really great views once uh, the Dragon spacecraft is done and it's at waypoint one. Uh, which again just about 150 meters away from the space station we're gonna get some great views back from station of dragon uh, still getting some pretty cool views uh, from that uh, camera on the center line it's getting close uh, the video is just a little bit intermittent, uh, but we, we, when we do get those great views from Dragon, you're now just being able to make out uh, the features of the international docking adapter just a little bit to the left of center. Uh, that is where we'll be headed, and it'll be coming into even clearer view uh, as Dragon gets closer. Right now, it's still only about, uh, it's approaching 150 meters away from the station. When we get close into 20 meters, which is waypoint one, uh, that docking adapter will be in full view and we'll be able to see the details of the international docking adapter, its pedals and everything. We'll be able to explain how the docking system is going to work. Yeah, but a great view of the station. So right in the center of the crosshair right now, that's actually the Japanese module Kibo. Uh, just to give you a little walk through what you're looking at on the station, just to the lift of the crosshair is that international docking adapter. You can see the station's robotic arm, that thin, a white line just beneath it, which that arm was actually used to do a survey of the docking adapter a couple of days ago, just in advance of this mission. To the left of that is the Columbus module, uh, which is the European module, has a lot of life support uh, and life sciences research hardware inside. Uh, and then the docking adapter itself is connected to node two, which is the Harmony module. And that's where the crew is gonna open up a hatch on that side, and then they'll open up the hatch on Dragon itself after we have this successful docking. All right, and we just heard confirmation that Dragon is now inside of the keep-out sphere. Now, again, the keep-out sphere is an imaginary circle around the International Space Station of about 200 meters. And this is just there uh, to help govern any of the flight paths for vehicles ultimately approaching the International Space Station. So we're inside 200 meters. Again, it's going to continue approaching until it's just 150 meters away. And then shortly after we get to waypoint one, the crew is gonna send Dragon a retreat command. So once it actually closes in just 10 more meters past waypoint one, gets to 140, they're gonna send a command and Dragon is gonna slowly back away. And this is just to demonstrate Dragon's ability to perform a controlled maneuver like braking and retreating, uh, and just also demonstrating uh, the crew's ability to command Dragon as again, they're in the loop the whole way up, they're monitoring. Uh, they're using displays on board that have kind of a little corridor that Dragon's going to be flying through, and they're just looking for any perturbations in Dragon's approach to the, spa uh, to the space station, both its attitude, kind of where it is on the center line and everything like that. So all that coming up real soon. Uh, obviously very important to demonstrate that Dragon can do these maneuvers uh, as once uh, there are people on board, uh, we'll want to make sure the Dragon's fully functional. So that's why we're doing this demo mission now. And it's important to note uh, these these systems, these tests uh, utilize all of the systems in sort of like a round trip way. It's a very yeah. thorough test of all the, the systems aboard Dragon and the space station, both uh, from the ability of the crews to use their equipment on the station to send the command over that link to the Dragon, have the Dragon receive it, have the flight computers uh, process those commands, and then send individual commands to the Draco thrusters all around the Dragon. Um, this really is a, a, a thorough test to make sure that, that when we have people on, this, on board this uh, spacecraft, that everything's going to go the way we think it does. Yeah. And uh, that's the whole point of this mission, really. Yeah. All right, we should be less than a minute to, to waypoint one. Just a reminder, that keep out sphere that we just crossed uh, is about 200 meters away from the station in all directions, about the length of a city block. Uh, and waypoint one is only 150 meters away. Uh, so we're just cruising in on those last 50 meters to waypoint one. And the space station continuing to come into higher and higher uh, resolution view. Uh, again, this is a camera from this Dragon spacecraft looking at the ISS.
All right, and we just heard the conversation there from Ann McLean back down to Houston. So we're past waypoint number one, and the retreat command has been sent. So we're actually going to see Dragon kind of stop here. And it was at 140 meters roughly when that retreat command was sent. So now Dragon's going to back away. And then the crew's actually going to send another command for Dragon to hold. And that'll be when it's about 180 meters away. Uh, and then once it gets to that hold point, they'll do another check out of Dragon Systems. And then it's over to the teams behind us here at MCCX and Hawthorne to send another command to Dragon to actually begin its final approach towards the International Space Station. Well, almost final. Almost. I, I keep saying final, we're ready for it to be final, but that'll bring it into waypoint two. Uh, Dragon's currently using its 16 total Draco thrusters. Uh, these are thrusters that uh, burn a, a combination of hydrazine and nitrogen tetroxide. Uh, these are hypergolic fuels that Dragon has in its tanks. Uh, there are 16 total uh, grouped into pods of uh, three, four sets of three around the uh, base of the cone of Dragon, and then a set of four right up near the nose cone. Uh, Dragon approaches the space station with the nose cone pointed towards the ISS. So when it's given this retreat command, it uses those four uh, thrusters at the very top to uh, turn on and thrust and pushes it back away from the station. So like Dan said, we're actually going to see the space station slightly drift further and further away. Dragon, uh, when it was given the retreat command, will be headed towards the command hold point at 180 meters. Uh, again, still on the uh, V bar of the station. And we did hear the confirmation that the retreat is in progress. So Dragon, again, slowly backing away. And the Capcom over in Houston uh, did radio up to Ann McLean on one of the space to ground loops uh, for them to, again, send that hold command at 180 meters. So that's the next milestone that we're going to be looking for. A really interesting thing on this uh, heads-up display in the bottom left-hand corner, you can actually see a diagram of the Draco thrusters on the Dragon spacecraft. And every time they light up, that's one of those Dracos uh, firing and uh, adding, adding thrust and changing the direction of Dragon. And we're hearing on our end that was a successful retreat demo. So we're moving along real smoothly again. So the next thing is uh, waiting to make sure that we had that hold command sent uh, from the crew on board the station, but successful retreat demo. As now the second successful retreat that you and I have experienced live, Dan. <laughs> that is right. This one was planned though. Yes. All right, so at this point, Dragon is just about 180 meters or so away from the International Space Station. And that camera still, it's just moving in a straight line uh, directly across from that International Docking Adapter, which now that the retreat demo has been completed, it's going to start moving its way back towards the International Space Station. And we're going to move into waypoint two, at which point it's going to hold, and it will only be 20 meters away from the station. Just a reminder that what you're seeing right now is a simulated view of what uh, you would see if you were inside the Dragon right now on those screens. <clears throat> uh, that's an overlay on top of the forward uh, media cam of the Dragon that looks directly down out where the, where the nose cone is unhinged and open. 
So uh, right now you're seeing a view from the high definition camera on the International Space Station. Um, we don't, can't see the Dragon right now, but it is out there. And when it gets a little yeah. closer towards Waypoint 2, you will not be able to miss it. It'll be only 20 meters away. Yeah, and so right now, Dragon is still retreating a little bit further away from the station. It's getting out to about 180 meters. And once it hits that, uh, the crew will send a hold command and then they'll just kind of let Dragon sit there for a little bit. And you can see in this diagram, again, with those approach corridors and other things that the crew's carefully monitoring, just making sure Dragon's kind of staying online with everything. Uh, once it gets out to 180 meters, they're going to command that hold and then we'll sit there for a little bit and then it's over to the flight controllers here in Hawthorne to command Dragon to begin its approach towards Waypoint 2. Uh, Waypoint 2 is that gray dot that's uh, in the very, very close to the International Space Station, the diagram you're seeing on your screen right now. Uh, just to give you an idea of the, the scale of the distances we're seeing. Uh, and on your screen you can you can see the, uh, the Draco thrusters uh, firing of that Dragon. Right now it's a little uh, bright the, the contrast is a little off, but you can see the uh, uh, every time one of those Draco thrusters fires, uh, you can see its exhaust gases spewing away from the Dragon. Uh, it's a great view right there. <coughs> it is. It's, it's great to get some views from the station side of Dragon, yeah. And hopefully once it gets in close, we'll get some views from those cameras right on the end of the docking adapter. But it's, it's always cool to see the thrusters fire in space, too. Look at them go. Reminder that uh, Dragon is a totally autonomous vehicle. Uh, it's station keeping, it's holding its position all by itself right now. Those are all the Dragon flight computers making uh, minute adjustments whenever it feels it needs to, uh, to stay pointed and in the right position. And we got an update, Dragon now about 160 meters away from the station, so still moving back. Again, slow and steady wins the race with, the, with everything today. We're just trying to make sure everything works. Uh, but continuing to back away, we're at 160 again, we're going out to 180, and then the crew should be sending a hold command to the spacecraft. And it sounds like the rate of opening, or basically how quickly Dragon's flying away from the station is only about 0.8 meters per second, so. Slow and steady wins the race. Slow and steady. Uh, now that we're in the uh, the sun, uh, Dragon is charging up its internal batteries with its body-mounted solar panels on the trunk. On your screen right now, you can see a side-by-side -side view of two uh, camera views. One on the uh, left is from the International Space Station looking at the Dragon, and, uh, and when it comes back, the one on the left, or the one on the right, is from the Dragon looking at the ISS. Uh, two spacecraft looking at each other. It's a little hard to make out here, uh, but in this view, you can actually see the nose cone hinged open. Uh, in, previous, in the previous Cargo Dragon, uh, the nose cone was jettisoned shortly after launch, uh, but this, in an, in an effort to make the spacecraft as reusable as possible, the nose cone is actually hinged and it opens up uh, onto the side. You can see the nose cone, it's the, sort of like a dome hanging off the top of Dragon uh, in its open position. Uh, <clears throat> after being attached to the station uh, and after it separates, it'll close that nose cone on its way back down to Earth after its mission attached to the space station is completed. All right, we just passed 170 meters away, so just a little under 10 meters to go. And the crew is going to be sending a command once more to Dragon. They're going to command it to hold, so it'll camp out there at 180 meters. And then right now, in the meantime, the teams uh, in Houston and in Hawthorne are getting ready to do a go-no-go -go for the actual approach into waypoint number two which will bring Dragon even closer. Copy. And McLean sending the hold command. Houston, the vehicle mode is hold. Copy, hold. Rage 181. And you just heard it. 
Uh, Dragon is currently holding out at the command hold point at 180 meters away from the space station. Uh, hanging out, waiting Dragon for the command to approach. Transition to the lab and monitor hold per block Charlie, line three, and one decimal one zero two, Dragon approach and retreat monitoring. Also at this time, we need the lab forward hatch closed, and you will need to bring up space to ground one on the lab, in the lab ATUs. And station copies, transition in process. And with that hold being successful, it looks like we are about 15 minutes ahead on the timeline still. So we were expecting that initial contact and capture to be at about 3 a.m. Pacific. So now could be 2.45 a.m. Pacific. We'll, we'll keep an eye on the timeline and everything, but moving very smoothly through all of the operations today. If you're just now joining us, Crew Dragon right there, only 180 meters away from the International Space Station, getting a great zoom in now. And pretty soon it's gonna be zooming itself towards the International Space Station. It's been a smooth day so far. We started a couple of kilometers away, moved into waypoint zero inside of the approach ellipsoid. It, at that point it was only 400 meters away from the space station. Then it flew up and around into the front port portion of the station, looking right down the barrel uh, of the docking adapter where it now sits. We went past waypoint one, which is 150 meters away. We had a successful retreat demonstration with the crew sending the command. It retreated out to 180 meters where it now sits, thanks to a successful hold command and demonstration from the crew. As Dan said, we were expecting a uh, contact at about three o'clock a.m. Uh, we uh, Pacific time, excuse me. We do we will have sunlight until about 2:45 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, so if we are 15 minutes ahead of schedule, we may even get some great sunlight views of the Dragon uh, within Waypoint 2, uh, which again, uh, 20 meters away from the space station, we'll be able to see all the features of that uh, SpaceX docking system. And so for right now, Dragon's just going to continue holding at about 180 meters away from the station. Again, the team's now looking at all the data, how, how Dragon systems have been performing so far. And once everybody's comfortable and they do one final or one more go, no go poll, Dragon's going to resume its approach and it's going to fly into waypoint two. And at that point, it's only going to be 20 meters away from station. And we copy. And for those of you just joining us, we are watching a live view uh, from the International Space Station looking towards the Dragon spacecraft currently holding at only 180 meters away. Station Houston and Station for step six. All video and overlays uh, look at nominal. Prop age is less than one. All status fields are showing expected status. And we copy. Uh, what you're seeing on your screen right now is in uh, what the overlay that the astronauts in the ISS are seeing. Uh, this is actually from and the and uh, centerline camera uh, on board the Dragon, uh, and you're seeing the uh, the docking over the docking system overlay that if you were on the International Space Station looking at that laptop, you'd be able to see the Dragon approaching and getting closer and closer to the International and Docking Adapter. To resume the approach. And we copy. And so NASA astronaut Anne McLean radioing they're ready on board the International Space Station for Dragon to resume its approach. So now the team's down here on the ground. We'll kind of check the final boxes, do the go, no go poll uh, amongst everybody out at the International Space Station flight control room in Houston. 
and the teams here on Hawthorne and the Dragon will be able to resume its approach. So again, we're just 180 meters away right now. Eventually going to be flying in shortly to a spot just 20 meters away from station. But with that hold demonstration now complete, that actually just means there's one more demo planned uh, for this flight. So, so far, Dragon uh, obviously conducted a successful launch yesterday uh, to bring it into its initial orbit. And then the Dragon spacecraft has conducted a series of demonstrations on its way to the space station. And that included checking out the GPS unit. Uh, multiple times, uh, two different times, both checking its own GPS coordinates against ground models down on Earth and also checking them against the GPS on board the International Space Station. Uh, just about two hours after the launch, it did a demo of its Draco thrusters uh, using two thrusters on the front of Dragon just to do two burns to simulate abort capability. And then it's done all of these demonstrations so far. The crew initially turning on a blinking light just to make sure they could command the vehicle and then just executing this retreat and hold demonstration. There's one more that's gonna be called the controllability, uh, where they're actually gonna set the speed of the vehicle just to mimic docking, uh, just for a short period of time as they go back past waypoint number one, which is 150 miles away, or meters away. Meanwhile, the team's right now conducting that final go, no go pull at the hold point at which point they're gonna get ready to resume the approach, move past waypoint one down to waypoint two, and only be 20 meters away. You just heard that uh, it sounds like Dragon is oh, still waiting. So we are hearing that Dragon has been cleared to uh, do the approach towards Waypoint 2. Uh, that is, again, only 20 meters away from the International Docking Adapter. Station Houston on 1, Dragon is resuming approach to Waypoint 2. Monitor per step 7 in 1.102, Dragon approach and retreat monitor. Dragon is currently resuming its approach towards Waypoint 2. Uh, again, after that commanded retreat, uh, it went back out to 180, maybe 170, 180 meters away, was commanded to hold, and it has just been given the go-ahead to re-approach back to waypoint two. That's right. The teams here in Hawthorne giving the command to Dragon, so it's once more on that approach. And again, everything is going to be really slow on this approach, closing in at a rate of just about a tenth of a meter per second or so. Uh, they are going to slow down speeds to just about the docking uh, speeds once they pass waypoint one in one final demonstration. Uh, but we are on the way now towards waypoint two. So Dragon's going to start closing in. In the station range 164. See a little bit order. more clearly now. You, uh, that's the nose cone of Dragon that's currently open. Uh, again, hinged and opened up uh, on the sort of top side of Dragon from this view right here from the International Space Station. And you'll hear Anne McLean the NASA astronaut on board radioing down on the space of grounds as uh, she and David St. Jacques have been monitoring and commanding the vehicle throughout all the operations today. 
Dragon, once it gets to waypoint two, it's going to stop. The teams in the meanwhile are going to be conducting a go, no go for docking. So that's the final go, no go poll that we'll do today. And that's the one that's going to get us really excited because then it's time for Dragon to actually dock to the space station. Dragon's going to make that initial soft contact uh, using uh, the adapter soft capture ring, which is then going to retract to bring Dragon in for the hard capture sequence. And that's where a series of hooks will actually close in to really tightly secure Dragon to that international docking adapter. Uh, as a further precaution, Dragon's soft capture system has a set of rotary spring dampeners just to lessen the force of that contact between the spacecraft and the International Space Station. One interesting note, though, uh, unlike Soyuz dockings, where the Soyuz spacecraft and the, dra or the space station go into free drift, so all the thrusters, all the attitude goes off just to lessen any of that force between the spacecraft's uh, docking mechanisms, it's not going to happen for Dragon. Both it and the International Docking Adapter are robust enough that the station's going to remain in attitude control. That's a, a much, uh, that well, at least that's a preferred uh, means of controlling the station, obviously, for the flight control teams, just so they can uh, continue to keep the station in its right attitude. So that will be uh, a notable departure from what we see for Soyuz dockings for this one. That is right. NASA developed the, uh, along with the International Docking ad uh, Adapter, they had developed the International Docking System Specification, which is then used by uh, SpaceX and other uh, visiting vehicles to, uh, to develop their uh, docking systems on board the spacecraft. Um, SpaceX has developed the SpaceX docking system, uh, which is a little bit different than other types of docking systems. It actually uses uh, those passive springs uh, that Dan was just mentioning. Um, the soft capture ring, we actually might be able to see it very soon as Dragon gets closer and closer, uh, is, is a ring about maybe uh, two or three feet wide that's about the same diameter as the hatch, and it has three pedals positioned at about 120 degrees apart from each other. Uh, the International Docking Adapter also has these pedals. It's what we call an androgynous docking system, so the pedals can interleave together as, the, uh, as we get closer and closer to contact. Um, that contact will be sensed uh, as soon as the as soon as the uh, soft capture ring gets close enough to actually latch into the opposing pedals of the international docking adapter. There are buttons all around the inside um, of those soft capture ring pedals, and as soon as they're compressed, uh, that's when we'll know we'll have a, a signal from our telemetry saying that contact has been made. And uh, at that point, the latching pawls on all those pedals will have engaged, and Dragon will be caught uh, by the docking adapter. Um, that is just what, we'll, what we call soft capture. It's actually not the full uh, uh, docking mechanism. So soft capture just means that that soft uh, docking ring has made contact with the station. Uh, the, docking, the soft capture ring has uh, six arms in a hexapod configuration attached to those springs. Uh, once the springs have dampened out any additional maneuvers uh, between the station and the, and the dragon, it'll then retract, bringing the dragon closer and closer to the station in for hard capture. Uh, that's when we have 12 docking hooks, hard capture hooks, uh, that will activate from the uh, Dragon side and grab onto hooks on the uh, International Docking Adapter side. And when that happens, that's when hard capture has occurred. Yeah, and that This will all make a little bit more sense when we uh, can get a better view of the docking adapter on, on the Dragon as it gets a little bit closer. Right now we are uh, approaching towards waypoint two. And we are just a couple of minutes away. We just heard Anne McLean radio down that we're inside of 100 meters. Copy all. There, there we go, getting a good call again from Anne McLean uh, on the space to grounds. Everything looking good so far with Dragon's approach. We're about 80 meters or so away from the station, so only about 60 meters to go until we're going to get to that final waypoint for this evening, morning, whatever time of day it is today. Uh, and then it's going to hold at 20 meters. And right now the teams are going around doing their final go, no go for docking. So after we get to that final hold point at waypoint two, it'll be time to move in and use that docking adapter for the very first time. And we here at SpaceX are so excited to see these systems. Uh, they've been tested uh, hundreds of times uh, uh, in conjunction with NASA. There's actually a, a, a docking system simulator that we've used to make sure that these, uh, these mechanisms will work ahead of time. And uh, everything looks really good so far. Uh, we're just so excited to see these things uh, happening in space for the first time. I'm getting the views back from the cameras on Dragon itself. Again, you can see 
That dock and adapter coming into view. It's not going to be directly in the center line. As this is actually a separate camera. Uh, the center line camera being fed to the crew members on board the International.